right, we got a Jedi Knight Cal Kestis Q&A. Um, nicely, at least this one's starting off with a real question instead of the last one with Rex, where it was whatever the dumb question. Uh, hey, Amy, hey, how are you? Or some nonsense. Anyways, let's get it. How often will the Jedi Cal event run? This will follow similar canons to other Heroes Journey and Legendary type events. Okay. On one hand, that's a sufficient answer. It does give them an answer. But at the same time, I don't feel like that actually answers the question. Because how often is that? <laughs> I know for me, I've been waiting for um, Grand Inquisitor's event to come back. And that the last time we had it was probably, what month are we now? July? So maybe like May it came around? Or, no, not May. Probably before that. April. I think. And anyways, yeah, because I spent the whole last month getting them from Relic 5 to Relic 7. That means they were ready to go. Could have been May. Regardless, I keep thinking, when is that event coming back? Because now I got my guys ready to go. My Inquisitors ready to go. And it's like, well, when am I going to see them? Do I have time to get them to Relic 8 then, just to make them even more beefy? I don't know. So, this answer doesn't really answer. Like, what is it? Every three months? Every six months? At once a year? <laughs> you need a better answer than that. The first time Impetuous Assault is used, this encounter instantly defeat target enemy. Does this include or exclude Galactic Legends? Well, there's two things right there that I can say without even reading the answer. One, obviously it excludes Galactic Legends because things like this always exclude Galactic Legends. Because, two... Galactic Legends are designed to be a little bit more OP, so you're not going to just have a move that kills them. I mean, Annihilate doesn't kill a Galactic Legend. Um, what other big move? I don't even think um, Mando's Disintegrate would kill a GL. Like, it does decent damage, but it doesn't kill them, because that's kind of the whole point. I mean, that's in their kit. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't the move Galactic Legend itself, doesn't that say that this, in, this, uh, <clears throat> this character can't be killed by one-hit moves or something like that? So, anyways, let's see what they said. The Galactic Legend Unique states, This unit takes reduced damage from percent health damage effects and massive damage effects. They take massive damage from destroy effects, excludes raid bosses, and are immune to stun effects. This is a destroy effect. <laughs> exactly, that's basically what I was just referencing. They're, they're GL, the, the um, unique that's just called Galactic Legend. So... This is a uh, destroy effect, which means they would take a lot of damage, but not be killed. And also, that means, depending on the character you're using, they have a good chance of healing back up. So, like uh, Jedi uh, Master Kenobi, you know, he can get pretty weak. And then, you know, his own abilities, and possibly through Cat as well, he can gain a lot of health back. Or if you're using uh, Jedi Master Luke, a lot of times people put Hermit Yoda in that squad. You got Hermit Yoda, he does his mass heal move, boom, back to decent health. So not only do you not kill the Geo, you basically do nothing to him. <laughs> Ignoring the damage immunity, does Jedi Knight Cal Kestis's unique make Jedi allies immune to cooldown increase from fear expiring? Yes, when fear expires on a character, it increases their cooldowns by one, and Cal Ke on Jedi Knight Cal's unique ability, Jedi Survivor, stops that from happening. That's cool. Stun target enemy for one turn and inflict them with armor shred for the rest of the encounter. Enemy isn't stunned for the rest of the encounter, right? Just armor shred. Stun for one turn, armor shred. Yes, that's right there. What are you talking about? Stun target enemy for one turn and then inflict them with armor shred for the rest of the encounter. What? How, would you, how would you be confused about that? It's right there in the verbiage. I mean, I guess CG's answer it just adds a comma, so maybe that helps split it up, but, like, it, it wasn't confusing to begin with. <laughs> Clearly says, stun them for one turn, and inflict this for the rest of the encounter. You're not going to stun them for one turn for the rest of the encounter, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Is Jedi Knight Calcus is intended to counter any Galactic Legends? So this would be a question, I guess, kind of like what they did with uh, Boba Fett, Sign of Django, and all those characters that like, get 42 Omicrons, and so that way then you can kind of become a GL in certain game modes. So let's just say, he is on par with GLs in Territory Battle. Outside of that, there were not specific Galactic Legends we targeted him with, although, spelled kind of weirdly, Sith Empire was definitely something we wanted to target, especially for their use versus JML. Jedi Master Luke. 
Jedi is one of the most versatile factions, with Jedi Master Luke being no exception. So we wanted to go the scary but exciting route of leaning into that. What? So, outside of territory battles, there isn't really anybody specific that they want to target, except for Sith Empire. What is this quite answer saying? Although Sith Empire was definitely something we wanted to target, especially for their use versus Jedi Master Luke. But then it sounds like Jedi Master Luke... What? I don't know. I'm not quite understanding. The, 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 whatever they're talking about Jedi Master Luke's throwing me up. Did they want to counter Jedi Master Luke or did they want to boost Jedi Master Luke? So you'd put um, Cal Kestis in a Jedi Master Luke squad and then you could go up against Sith Empire? I don't know. Would you be able to use Jedi Master Luke's ability on Jedi Cal's first turn? Yes, on Jedi Knight Cal's first turn, he has access to his basic and any other granted abilities that other characters might give him. In the case of Jedi Master Luke and Inherited Teachings, Cal can target another ally and they will attack out of turn as normal. However, if he uses his basic and unlocks his special abilities during that bonus turn, he can only use his specials. His basic and any granted abilities will not be visible in the user interface. Okay, that's a good that's a good question because that was something that someone in the community was asking. Like, how does this work? If you have if you have that, or if you have Jedi Knight Luke's ability, like does Cal have access to it or what? I mean, I guess based on this response, you're probably better off just using Cal's basic and not worrying about the granites because then he gets his bonus turn where he can use one of his specials Where if you use the granted ability, it's kind of like then your turns over so but That options still there Does Rowan slam lose the days with Omicron in territory battles? Yes, while in territory battles you lose days with the Omicron but gain an AoE stun and armor shred in any other game mode, you still have the ability to daze your opponents. Yeah, that's very uh, kit reveal specific. I don't fully remember those details, so I'm not entirely sure what they're talking about here, but okay. <laughs> Impetuous Assault states, under the Omicron, this ability can't be used unless Jedi Knight Calcestis has 30 stacks of Impetuous. Does this only apply to the Omicron or the whole ability? The whole ability. Well, yes. Why would you think that has anything to do with the Omicron? They always lay everything out separately. Anyways, it's the actual ability, and then they put the Omicron abilities under it. And uh, Impetuous Assault, that's the move where you can insta-kill somebody. So, it's kind of obvious. Like, duh, you'd need to get up to 30 stacks. They're not just going to give you an insta-kill right out the gate. I mean, they do do that with Cat, but still, that's different. Plus, why would... <laughs> Omicrons usually make it so then the character is better. Why would you not have to have 30 stacks of Impetrus and then you get an Omicron and now you need 30 stacks? Like, that doesn't even make sense when you stop and think about it. Can Jedi Knight Cal use Jedi Master Luke's special inherited teachings? What? Didn't we just learn about this? Can Jedi Knight Cal use Jedi Master Luke's special inherited teachings? How does his AI prioritize it if he can? Jedi Knight Cal only blocks the use of his special abilities. Any granted abilities Jedi Knight Cal gains from allies, enemies, or other modifiers, galactic challenge, character bars, etc., etc., are still available to him at the start of his turn. The exception to doing this is during Jedi Knight Cal's bonus turn, where he only has access to his three specials. His basic and any granted abilities will not be available to him during that turn. The AI tends to prioritize inherited teachings when it can with Jedi Knight Cal. You know, I guess that's different, that they would prioritize interrogative teachings, because I'm pretty sure the AI, under normal characters, never uses inherited teachings. At least that's the way it seems when I play. It seems like they always use their basic or something, and I'm like, why do they never use fucking this move? I want them to use this move, and they're over here just doing their regular old moves, like, totally ignoring that. <laughs> At least that's how it seems, maybe I'm wrong. Is the earliest Cal can achieve the instant defeat ability on his fourth bonus turn? If not, then when? Please explain. Thank you. The math is correct here. If you alternate your configuration by swapping between Whirlwind Slam and Whirl Mill Defense, then you can... I mean, then by turn three, you will have achieved 30 stacks of Impetuous. This means Jedi, Knight's, Jedi Knight Cal's fourth turn will be the turn that Impetuous Assault ability with an instant defeat is available. Yeah, so you gotta wait forever. Which, uh... Is typically how it goes. I mean, you got Nihilus with his Annihilate. has a cooldown of 8. Now, yeah, the, his secondary move, whatever that's called, 
can reduce those cooldowns, but you're still waiting forever. You got um, Mando, who's got his instant de defeat move, but that depends on you um, getting the payout. <laughs> so these moves are always cool, but they also take forever to get, which I, I guess is good. It sucks if you're the player with the character. But on the other side of things, you don't really want to be getting killed right away. <laughs> With the Omicron on Whirlwind Slam, you lose the two turns. Wow, what? You lose the two turns days on everyone for a one turn stun on everyone? <laughs> days goes on all of the non targeted enemies. Your target will be stunned for one turn. You also gain AoE armor shred and extra defensive bonuses on your next use of Windmill Defense. Okay, again, I don't fully remember the kit, so this. Uh does nothing for me, but there it is. <laughs> Just to clarify, the third special can only be used at 30 stacks of Impetuous, regardless if it is being used in Territory Battle or not. Yes, the 30 stack restriction is regardless of the game mode. Yes, that's super fucking obvious. It's a requirement you have to meet before you can have it. It's kind of like, again, Mando's uh, Disintegrate. You have to get your payout to unlock that move, then he can use it. But even then, it still has its own cooldown. Like, you use it right away, but then it has a cooldown of 5 or 6 or something that you gotta bring down before he can use it again. Can you have negative stacks of impetuous? Well, that's kind of a dumb question because nothing is ever negative. The worst you'll have is zero. It is not possible to have negative stacks of impetuous. Yeah, that's basically what I just said. Who does Jedi Knight Cal Kestis synergize with the best? Depends on the mode and situation. He does not have one best team on purpose due to the flexibility the Jedi faction has in the game. His Omicrons allow for a much weaker team in territory battle than in other areas. Oh, they're saying a much weaker team like his characters he can be with. Yeah, that's kind of like what I was talking about during the kit reveal. Like, you could put him with random characters that aren't typically used, so that way then you're not really breaking up your JML or JMK squads. Like, you could put him with probably um, Ayla Secura, maybe someone random like Kit Fisto or something, Plo Koon maybe even. Random characters that normally suck, but under his territory battle... Omicron lead would actually give them a decent boost and they'd be I'm not saying great but they'd be semi viable a little bit better a little bit better than normal maybe you won't get too far in territory battle like uh, I'm thinking rise of the empire maybe there's two there's two phases per node so maybe you'll complete phase one and not be able to complete phase two but it's better than what they would normally do which is not even complete phase one <laughs> Configuration dual wield can lower enemies offense by up to 60%. Does this stack with the 50% from offense down, potentially leading to enemies having negative 100% offense? They do stack. What does negative 100% offense mean? Does that mean... What does that mean? That a character attacks you and basically does nothing because they're weak? Is that what that means? That's weird. <laughs> is that what that means, though? This is confusing. Negative 100% offense. Like, if you gain 100%, that means you're doubling. But if you lose 100%, yeah, I guess that means you're losing it all. So you, you can make your enemies have no offense? So they attack you and it does absolutely nothing? That's kind of cool. <laughs> Ru wow. What? <clears throat> Why does this keep coming out weird? What role in the meta is he supposed to fulfill? We intended for him to be an absolute monster in the territory battle. Outside of territory battle, we wanted to give players more flexibility with their Jedi. Jedi Master Luke, Jedi Knight Luke, and Jedi Knight Revan all have a lot of power, especially in their leads, and we wanted to give players more room to work with for multiple competitive Jedi squads. No mullet? We used the canonical look for Jedi Knight Cal Kestis. Okay, a couple things right there. One... It's one of those stupid questions, but at least it's about the character. It's better than one of those ones directed at stupid husky meathead. But two, what are you talking about mullet? He had a mullet at one point? I'm trying to think. Jedi... What is it? Jedi Survivor? No, what's the first one called? I don't know. Fallen Order? Does he have a mullet in that? I'm trying to think of what his hairstyle looks like. <laughs> But then they said the cano canonical look. So what does that mean? Does he have a mullet, mullet in the comics or something? What, what would even be the canonical look? Just the look from the game? 
I don't know. Anyways. Can you share a total of Zetas and Omicron's needs so I don't have to count? Okay, that's a pretty dumb, lazy question. The worst part is, I'm saying it's lazy, but yet you took the time to go to the forums to type all that when all you easily had to do was just look at what it says in the kit reveal. I'm pretty sure it's three Zetas, three Omicron's. Genonite Calcastus has a total of three Zetas and three Omicron's. See, I just fucking said that, and I didn't even read this yet. <laughs> Zetas are on Windmill Defense, Impetuous Assault, and Jedi Survivor. Omicron's are on Whirlwind Slam, Impetuous Assault, and Weight of the Galaxy. I mean, you could easily have deduced that just from the kit reveal, like I just did. You just pay attention to the kit reveal. Did you not even read the kit reveal? You just went straight to the Q&A? The irony, though. Th this took so much more effort to type this question. You know, go to the forum, go to the area where you're supposed to submit questions, type out your question, than it would have taken just to look through the thing. They even highlight it in the beginning. It says, like, cooldown 3, Zeta. Cooldown 3, Zeta and Omicron. Cooldown 3, Omicron, or whatever. It's right there. It takes no effort to count this up. Like, are you kidding me right now? Who's the idiot who asked this? What's even dumber is that CG actually answered it. Which makes sense because of this following question. How's your day going, dickbag? How's your fucking summer, motherfucker? This isn't meathead, but my day's going pretty good. Okay. So now there's two cockbags that are going to be trying to do this. And putting nonsense in there. This wasn't even cockbag. It's somebody else. And you still have to go and put the stupid... This question in there. If it was me, I would have admitted that. But I'm like, fuck this. This is irrelevant to the character. Ugh! Anyways. Is Cal meant to be a GL, JML lifter? Why the fuck does everybody think that? No, he's not meant to be a lifter at all. There's nothing about his kit that implies he's a lifter. In the realm of Cat to JMK, no. But he will absolutely help you spread out all these powerful Jedi. Spread out all these powerful Jedi while in PV <clears throat> PvP. In territory... Seriously? In territory battles? Why can't I not talk? He's his own beast. Yeah, everybody keeps thinking he's a GL lifter. No, he's not. There's like nothing about his kit that <laughs> implies that. He's his own character. Yeah, you could probably put him with JML or JMK and make the squad better, but he's not actually a lifter. It just makes it better because he's good. Regarding Cal's cross guard stance, I understand it's locked until you gain 30 stacks of Impetuous. Is this stance still locked even after being used once, or can it be freely used at that point? Impetuous Assault only becomes unlocked at 30 stacks of Impetuous. Because the use of Impetuous Assault removes stacks of Impetuous, you will need to use either whirlwind slam or windmill defense to get back up to 30 stacks and regain access to impetuous assault so in other words no motherfucker <laughs> you need to constantly have your 30 stacks in order to use that move without the 30 stacks that move is not available at all which means that the cross guard stance is not available at all How's your guys' week going? Here we go. This question really matters. This is going to tell me a lot about Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, right? I'm trying to convince Dickhead to have lunch with me, but he won't. Why would you want to go have lunch with that moron anyways? He seems like an extreme liberal leftist with his stupid they, with his stupid they crap all the time when there's like a female character, like I've said multiple times. Oh, they, they. It's not they, motherfucker. Seer Junda's a girl, woman, whatever you want to say. It's she. Ain't no they. There's one of her. There's not two or three of her to be pluralized. He's also a cocky motherfucker, how he's always putting those stupid questions on you. Like, why would you want to hang out with that dickhead? Fuck him, he can go by himself. Or you can go by yourself and have a better lunch than dealing with that little fucking pussy. <laughs> Finally done trolling Red 5. I don't understand this right here because the questions are always asked in bold and then their answers are provided in unbold, in regular font. So... They just decided to put this in here, finally done trolling Red 5, to a question that nobody asked? I, I don't understand what's going on there. What leader is recommended outside of territory battles? Jedi Knight Cal does well with just about every Jedi leader. That being said, he compliments Jedi Master Luke, Jedi Knight Luke, and Jedi Knight Revan particularly well. Outside, yeah, I mean, that's a dumb question, too. Come on, think about the best Jedi leads. Are you gonna put them under a Yoda lead? No, <clears throat> nobody uses Yoda lead. You're gonna put them under a 
Qui-Gon lead? I mean, maybe in territory battle. But otherwise, no. Actually, territory battle could be pretty good with, with uh, uh, Qui-Gon lead. Because once Qui-Gon's killed, everybody gains 400% of Qui-Gon's offense. But then at the same time... I don't know if this would work together, but at the same time, doesn't um, Cal have an ability that he grants everybody higher offense to begin with? So then that would make um, Qui-Gon's offense rating higher, which means would you get 400% of that or just his regular base? I'm not sure how that works, but if it's of the increase that Cal gives, then the boost that everybody gets after he's killed would be even higher. Then Cal giving himself the boost, would that stack on top of that? So now the 400% of, I don't know. Either I'm going way too deep on this, or I'm spot on, which means you would have a massive, the whole squad would have a massive offense boost. But then if you modded Cal for offense, he'd just be super bionic at this point. So that could actually be pretty good in Grand Arena if you have the Omicron. But anyways, I'm just saying, like, you know, there's a, you're going to use it under Luminara? Unduly? <laughs> no. You really only have three, four options. Bastilla, maybe. They didn't say Bastilla. She's a decent lead, too. But, like... What a dumb question. Well, maybe it's not dumb, actually. No. <laughs> maybe what they're actually saying is, is there anybody that you had in mind specifically? But the answer is no. The answer is, use anybody that you feel like who's pretty good. So maybe it's not as dumb as I was thinking. Never mind. I went a little hard on making fun of them. <laughs> an animation question. Will Cow's Saber still be seen with whatever configuration was last picked until it changes? Or will the Saber revert after each animation to the single saber it will revert after each animation to the single saber because we like our art team what i mean the first half of that answer makes sense to me that's not what i'm wanting it's oh, okay yeah it makes sense that it goes back if you're not in the configuration why would you keep that pose active you know it's like impetuous assault we just learned that that goes away because he needed 30 stacks. So he's not going to keep a cross guard, even though he doesn't have Impetuous Assault. But the part that I said what to was because we like our art team. What does that have to do with anything? Like you're switching back to a basic looking stance because you like your art team. What are you trying to say? Like you think your art team did good on the basic stance or because at the same time, your art team did all of these. So they also, that means they also did the configurations so if you like your art team you would like those configuration stances as well so what that 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 last part doesn't make any sense it's almost like you only partially like your art team oh we like the part of the art team that did the the basic pose we don't really like when they did those configuration poses <laughs> anyways i had a feeling there'd be a lot of questions for this because cal is a big character that, we, that one we've been waiting on for a while and two he has what, six abilities total? You know, his four moves plus uh, a leader ability and a unique. So there's a lot to ask questions about. And, uh, yeah, I figured there'd be a lot of questions, and there sure was. Um, obviously, I'm a little bit late. It's because I took last week off from videos. What are you going to do? <laughs> At the end of the day, anyways, I do this for free. So, like, what the fuck, you know? It's not even a job. It's, it's, it's extra work I give myself for nothing. So... <laughs> Think about taking weeks off all the time. But anyways, <laughs> has nothing to do with anything. Um, what does have something to do with something is that you check this out with me. So thanks for that. And until next time, I said see ya.